everyone and welcome to the Backyard Art School. So today has been a very busy, well it's been a very busy week. We've had lots of floods and rain in uh, New South Wales. Um, and with that as well, today we have had to clear all of our gutters because we had uh, quite a large bit of um, flooding happening in our backyard um, and so forth. So we're clearing all the gutters. We had to clear away a lot of debris and so forth from the storms. Um, and a lot of people have had um, a lot of issues, um, obviously with their homes being flooded and so forth. So uh, this is just a part of mother nature, just showing, you know, a little bit of a clearing is needed to happen. And, um, and yeah, so it's just been a, a bit of a clean up work that we've needed to do at our studio as well. Uh, so just for today, just to, I think the topic would be great, um, and I think the topic that uh, I, that comes to mind is that the show must go on even with any adverse things that happen outside um, and out of your control. Uh, you just try and work with it. So I'm about to go and uh, pick up my students for my after school classes. Um, it's Monday afternoon and I didn't have any time to record last week because of all the cleanups and what we had to do um, over the weekend. Um, but I have jumped on just in the last 20 minutes before I go and pick up my students. Um, and I just wanted to let you know of, of what's going on with the studio. Um, not just just the cleanup but also just with what I'm doing with the classes so with today's classes we are focusing on uh, their favorite objects that they would like to paint and so our students today are um, in the process of working from photographs which they've gridded up and then they're going to be transferring those from the photographs onto a larger format canvas um, with the grid up gridding method which I'm teaching them and uh, this class will actually be available during the last term for the online classes that we have with the membership. Uh, with the portraiture uh, classes, you'll see this come up. Um, and as for our online classes for uh, still life, classes. Um, this week I have got this lovely uh, watercolour class that I, is a build up to a major work for the older students which is practicing how to paint a waratah. So just going through the processes of the layers that you need to learn um, of how to uh, develop a um, watercolour painting but just on a small uh, scale with just a waratah before they embark on doing a, a full native flower um, watercolour which they'll, they'll do for the next class. Uh, and then for the younger students there is a different process for the six to eight year olds that I teach which is by uh, doing each of the watercolour elements separately um, that they will then uh, build for the final um, artwork as a collage where they'll have the background painted separately to the vase that they created separately and then to the flowers that they are painting separately on separate pieces of paper. They cut that, those elements out and then they collage it all together and bring it all together. So that is what we're doing with our um, online classes um, and our face-to-face -face classes. Um, and this is what we were doing last year. So our online classes is like a year behind of the classes that I'm teaching today, um, which is the favorite objects. And uh, so it's a different focus where we're now more focused on uh, acrylic painting, uh, brush technique, and ha also how to develop an artwork which can, from a small scale drawing or design or composition, can then be scaled up onto a larger canvas. Oh, and you're looking behind me. Uh, I'm actually in our indoor studio area doing this filming at the moment um, and this is uh, artwork that my mum Basha is working on and she's also just finished teaching a class today so we just had to change over with um, you know changing over the classroom and she's also got another class tomorrow where she teaches adults and I focus on teaching children. Uh, so yes, this is a lovely um, abstract painting that she's been working on. Um, so she works uh, every day um, and at the moment my mum is teaching about two classes per week during the day. She's uh, waiting 
to have a uh, hip replacement. Um, so we are preparing ourselves for that as well, for that event to happen. But um, yeah, it's sort of, you know, everything that you need to do in life, um, essentially with your work, when you've got your own business, the show must go on, you need to provide classes and so forth. Um, but you could, you've got the control to be able to adjust things um, as it happens. Um, so I will be looking at, for instance, when my mum has had her operation, which was put back because um, of COVID, uh, she wasn't able to get her um, hip replacement done during that period. She's now ha has had to wait um, until just after Easter to have it done, the process. Um, and she's going to need about six months of healing time. I will most probably be not teaching my Saturday class and just keeping my weekly classes to adjust for her healing and to be able to support her during that time. So um, these are all little adjustments that you may need to do um, just to help you know, with whatever is going on in your life. Um, but usually when I communicate anything that needs to happen or any changes that need to happen, people are very compassionate with what is happening. They understand. Um, and so any changes that needs to be made, uh, it's not like I'm going to be losing my students. It's more that I'll need to pause a certain class just to help out with, um, you know, with things that are happening uh, within this space, this home space. But uh, there are other things that I'd like to share with you. So today um, is uh, the first day that I have uh, just worked through. This morning I was working at home at my home studio. Uh, and my I should say it's my office space. And I was, um, I've was i just finished uploading all of our Easter face-to-face -face workshops that we're offering, which is fantastic. Um, and I'm really excited about them. I'd like to talk through what I am offering. Um, so for this Easter, I think this is the first Easter we've had in two years, which has been face-to-face -face, uh, since COVID lockdown. All the other classes were online. Uh, so what we're having for this year is we've got this beautiful kookaburra workshop that I I had taught online and it's such a beautiful workshop that I'm offering it now for my face-to-face -face students um, and it's a lovely mixed-media workshop which will be um, framed and it'll be painted on paper but we're using mixed media as well as collage for our younger students uh, so it'll be painting and then any of the details they'll be applying a oil pastel to develop um, the lovely um, textures of both the wattle which will be painted in the background and then also for the lovely feather features of the kookaburra and I do love the kookaburra it is one of my favorite birds native birds of Australia we actually have them calling every morning or um, at the end of the day you always hear them calling uh, and it's sort of like the, the bushman's wake-up call sort of you know or when to go to bed uh, so the kookaburra I do love them and there's like a family that just lives like literally in the trees above of us in the gum trees just above the our studio here so we're very fortunate to even though living in the CBD area to have such so many natural uh, also native bush um, sorry native birds that come and visit our areas um, and so I have actually done the kookaburra or as a subject both as a sculpture as well um, and I've actually got the sculpture just over there but I, I won't grab it now I will actually I'll, I'll grab it just give me a moment So yeah, I have actually offered this um, kookaburra, beautiful kookaburra as a sculpture workshop as well. So you can see, so that was for a school holiday workshop that I offered um, them to sculpt it. Um, and it was a full day workshop, six hours. It took six hours to actually sculpt the base of the kookaburra. We didn't really have any time to paint it. That would have been an extra, I, I would say it'd be about an extra two hours to, to be able to paint it, but we are offering online membership how to sculpt um, your favorite cat later on in term three. So um, that will show you the process of how I sculpt these lovely, um, beautiful out of air dry and clay 
Uh, so that's just an example of the kookaburra. It's for the older students. So we always love to include a little bit of abstract. My mum um, teaches the abstract classes. I'll see how she goes with uh, this Easter because it'll just before she starts, um, she goes into having her operation. Um, and because she's had to prolong and wait for her operation, have, she's had a lot of issues with pain uh, with her hip. So I will be most surely teaching the class. Um, and it is a lovely abstract. It, the starting point of any of our abstract classes is the starting point of any of the abstract paintings that my mom um, creates even this one behind me. So um, it is a lovely process and you can go in different directions and I usually like this one. It kind of reminds me of um, sort of creating like the opals or circling out, it looks like opals, some of the, the beautiful um, designs that you have, which is um, just by using different layers of paint and so forth. Or it could be also looked at as being like Easter eggs in a way. So that's why I've sort of chosen this abstract, this particular abstract painting workshop for this time of the year. And uh, the students will be the older students. It'll be for them. They can choose whatever background color that they would like to um, to use. But it is a way that a lot of abstract paintings are developed, where you'll do um, a layers of where you just intuitively um, splash on paint onto your canvases. You do a couple of layers with that. Then you really look at the beautiful patterns or whatever has naturally occurred in your painting and you sort of focus on that or circle that out as being a part of your uh, final artwork. So this is like a starting point of abstract painting. Um, there are so many different levels and, and ways of, of creating an abstract painting. It's, it's really varied, but we do just uh, for this class, just focus on picking out these lovely elements that have naturally occurred through intuitive painting. And, um, and that's what the focus is for, uh, this, this workshop. And, um, and then we also go on to a lovely watercolor painting for our younger students. Uh, so this is looking at autumn colors and really focusing on those lovely warm uh, oranges and reds and yellows um, and then the, the, the brown colors as well as um, using uh, the watercolors to create four different little um, paintings. And the paintings we will be developing will be of an autumn leaf um, and I'll be showing them ways of masking in watercolor to then allow it to be fed in with a wash and then to also develop the accent layer as well with details. Uh, then with the next one it will be of a landscape so again it'll be that watercolor wash uh, masking in with water and then feeding in, allowing for the natural um, bleeding or wet on wet um, color mixing to occur. Uh, and then also to then de uh, develop the detail at the end. And then uh, the last one, oh, there's another one of a tree, which is another, um, you know, masking in method as well. And we also have an abstract uh, little uh, watercolor that they'll be also doing. And this is for our six to eight year old students. I've done this workshop already a couple of times. Um, and it is also really lovely the way that you, um, the students will take them home in an A-frame. So there's a method that I've created where you can cut out on, from a piece of thick cardboard um, and folding the paper and I've designed it so that you, they can have the artworks in this A-frame which folds out as a little A-frame and it's double-sided so they can have all of their artworks presented um, as they wish um, from different angles on this particular A-frame. So it's a really clever way of just cutting up a base frame and then cutting up the paper um, that I've designed so that they can take home something which is nice and small to show their artworks or watercolors off with. Uh, the next one is a stylized um, tree of flowers. So this is my mum's uh, workshop, Basha. So she also, her background in painting has been from folk and decorative art. She was an award-winning artist who had um, exhibited at the Royal Easter Show and had taught overseas in Hong Kong and so forth and her folk art um, 
uh, has been incredible with uh, learning many, many different uh, incredible brush techniques, such as loading the brush with three different colors, brush techniques for how to paint um, beautiful uh, flowers and petals and so forth. This will be for the younger students and it will be a workshop that um, is more tapping into a stylized version of a tree and then letting each of the students to tap into their imagination so they're able to create their own little flowers um, and once they've created and designed their own little flowers using different brush techniques they then put that those designs onto their major work which will be then framed so it's a really beautiful workshop all the children spend the whole day totally enthralled with this class um, and it's a really lovely one to do uh, for the younger students and, they, and then they absolutely love the what what they have created at the end of the day uh, then we also have this lovely uh, workshop which is self-portrait so this is what I do um, and I teach the students older students um, just the process of how to draw their self-portrait then also how to paint their self-portrait it is um, looking at just how to do all the measurements with the face proportions and so forth um, and then also how to apply their skin tone how to mix their skin tone usually it's just three different skin tones that develops the shape and form for their face but they also finish it off with an inspiration of Frida Kahlo but I've done this uh, I love to create this with a little bit of a twist not with a Mexican theme but more with an Australian theme so the decorations that they have in their hair or the animal that they'd like to include in their portrait is an Australian theme so they'll maybe have a rainbow lorikeet perhaps on their shoulders or they'll choose to have Australian native flowers in their hair such as a waratah or such as a um, South Australian uh, sweet pea or such as um, these lovely wattle. Um, so they'll choose what sort of things, plants they would like to have, native Australian. Um, and I have a lot of photos that they can look at and then what they would like to, um, desert, sorry, it was a desert pea that I was thinking of, um, those red flowers. Um, so there's a lot of different scopes of each student having a really lovely individual portrait that they all take home um, that is inspired with Frida Kahlo in regards to the decorations that she used to put into her hair but it will be an Australian themed um, self-portrait. Uh, so I'm really excited about that's going to be on a painter on a canvas um, and usually the students will have a full day of going through the drawing through to the painting of their portraits and then finally how to paint their lovely flowers and so forth in all their native Australian bird or I've actually had some students that have painted in a lovely snake um, around their neck which was, looked really good actually I was surprised that they chose to, to do that but it was really a lovely um, really a lovely addition to their pe portrait um, and then we also have a lovely uh, it, in Australia, um, coming up to Easter, the following Monday will be Anzac Day, so it's the Memorial Day for um, Anzacs that have passed away um, through war. But I've decided to create um, a lovely uh, workshop which is painting the red poppy. And this is a flower that symbolizes um, around the world. Uh, the it is symbolizes Remembrance Day, so it is a flower of remembering those soldiers that have fallen, and this I think is quite, um, you know, it, at this moment uh, with what's happening overseas as well as what has happened already. Like in Australia, it is a time to really pay respect for our Anzacs that have gone out to war um, and it is a lovely workshop that we're teaching which is the red poppy that symbolizes the re remembrance of these soldiers um, and it again goes and focuses into the lovely brush techniques. Uh, my mum actually um, usually teaches this workshop but I'll be teaching it this time and I'll also be providing this workshop as um, for our members for our online classes um, so this will be part of what will be shown when we come up to the Easter school holidays for our online members as well so it's a beautiful workshop um, a lot of lovely techniques to show um, and learn from how to paint beautiful um, petals and how to develop and build up a lovely background layer as well 
And then for our ending of our Easter school holidays, we always finish off with our lovely uh, sculptures. So the first one is of a gnome home. So I really love for our younger students, they enjoy uh, sculpture. I love sculpture, that is my background with art. I absolutely love the tactile experience of building something. Uh, they start off the day with designing their, their gnome home to scale uh, on a piece of paper, they'll draw that up. And then they'll also decide, do they want to have a gnome or a fairy, or they can have both if they have time to create it. Uh, and then they go through the process of uh, building an armature for their gnome home, then putting on the paper clay, building up uh, the roof, and then um, putting all the decorations on their gnome home. So it could be plants that they might um, uh, sculpt on as a relief. Uh, and then they paint the gnome home and they also sculpt their little gnome or fairy that they would like to have living in their little um, house. So it's a great little sculpture workshop that I do um, and it finishes off for the, class, for the end of the year. Uh, then for the older students we have the beautiful pink robin which is native. Uh, you find these pink robins, uh, it's native to Australia, found in southeast Australia. Gorgeous little bird. I'm, I'm uh, teaching them how to sculpt a little bird and then also how to sculpt a little nest um, with little eggs in it. So it's a really beautiful, fun workshop to do for the older students. It's a little bit too fiddly for the, uh, for the younger students. So a lot more focus on detail, uh, just a lot more careful um, sculpting techniques as well. But it's a really fun class. Uh, the nest itself is embellished with like leaves. Um, and also sticks and so forth and then you've got the little eggs inside of the nest uh, and then you also have the lovely pink robin which is sitting over um, what, looking over the eggs so it's a lovely Easter themed workshop um, so I'm I'm really excited about this I'm just having a look at making sure that I've got everything yeah we've only got eight classes because all the other days during the Easter school holidays is a public holiday um, and so I'm I'm looking forward to these classes uh, and I hope to, um, yeah, I hope it inspires you. You may want to see some of the workshops or you may want to look at our online classes um, to be inspired on the processes of how do I develop it or I might just be inspiring you just by watching. I will be providing a class soon um, coming up um, on our YouTube channel. Uh, so it will be, most probably I'm looking at the watercolors of the Waratah, which is up just now. Um, I'll look at posting that up soon as well. So you can have a little sample of a class um, that you'll be able to follow and do soon. And I'll let you know when that's happening. So please, um, Please click on the like button. Um, by doing that, you'll have more viewers. Please follow our page. I'm going to be developing this more and more and, um, and I'll be more in tune of what and how to communicate uh, for you on YouTube. Um, it is a, it's a different platform for me to work on. I don't do any editing with these videos. I just talk freely because I really don't have too much time to be uh, doing all the he heavy editing that I do for when I do my online classes, which, um, yeah, you've got different views of overview for when I'm drawing and um, painting and then, you know, the face views. So there's different ways that I record those ones, which is much more work involved. It takes me about, for each class, about 40 hours from filming to um, developing to writing content and then uploading onto um, the, the membership platform. So it's slightly different, uh, but I think that just by talking off the cuff of what's happening at the studio, you have more insight of what I do as an art teacher uh, running an art school in, in her backyard. <laughs> and um, yeah, I look forward to you um, joining me again and please do uh, press that like button uh, so more people will be more aware of what I'm doing. And with more people more aware, I may look into doing some live YouTube as well. So I'll have a bit more conversation of what you're wanting to see um, and what you would like um, to know about. So I wish you all the best and I hope 
for the rest of the week and I hope floods if you're in Australia aren't affecting you too much and I really um, I really sympathize and I, I really understand um, you know what you're going through and the cleanup efforts and I hope to see you soon bye <laughs>